mental health. Mental health. We talk about active surveillance, but I don't know about Canada. I've talked to you about this, but you got to give my, your opinion on mental health. And the reason I say that is I would look at some of your data and it would, one of the number one reasons for dropout or the top reasons, it would say anxiety. And I'm going, yeah, exactly. Cause you're not being treated. People are freaking out. You told me you had cancer. How do you address the mental health aspects of active surveillance? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of myths about this. Okay. So for, in our cohort, 11% dropped out because of anxiety. Now, wow. you, have, you have to understand, when we started doing this, you know, there was not this understanding that I think there is now of latent cancers or overdiagnosis or indolent cancers. So, you know, 15 years ago, as a clinician, you say to a patient, you have cancer, but you don't need any treatment. And they look at you like, are you insane? You know, could you please send me to some doctor who knows what he's talking about? Right. So there was much higher level of anxiety. Now I think uh, this is now kind of part of the public discourse. People are aware of some of these issues of overdiagnosis and overtreatment and indolent, indolent cancers. So the sort of overall societal level of anxiety about this has gone down. And we also have data from many many studies that, you know, there's anxiety associated with prostate cancer, for sure. Uh, there's increased suicide rate and people have been diagnosed, all kinds of things. But how, you, how they are treated has no impact, like no measurable, doesn't seem to make any measurable difference. The one exception, there's a group of patients, not that common, socially isolated, no social supports, prone to anxiety disorders, they don't do well on surveillance and, you know, maybe they, sh although even so it responds to counseling, but, but my personal experience has been, if you give patients the right information, you use the right phrases, you talk about things like pseudo cancer, a, a, a part of the aging process, the anxiety just melts away. You know, and the other side of it is that these patients who avoided treatment, they get to know more about the disease. They meet guys who've had treatment they, after a while, they're, 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 they, they develop ebullience, like they're so, they're so gratified that they didn't end up having radical therapy. Yeah. And uh, so, so I, I just don't see it. And also the, the proportion of patients who insist on treatment now has definitely got down. It's nowhere near 10% anymore. It's probably in the 2 to 3% range. So wonder, it's just not an issue as far as I can see it for the vast majority of people. I, I wonder if you went back on the data or look now. So I think, I think it's better with, with you out there and other people. People have less anxiety. But what I still see is spouse anxiety and family anxiety because they don't get it. You know, some, yeah. And I understand. So maybe we have to start educating family members and spouse because I see a lot of times where someone will say, okay, this makes sense. But the other person says, well, in other cancers, this doesn't. And then there's this battle back and forth. Yeah. And someone gets convinced to treat. So I don't know if you see that, or maybe you see a cohesive, more cohesiveness. Listen, I know, I mean, we have data on this. The, the range of practice is still huge. Like there is uh, the music, right. your, your, your colleagues in, in uh, um, University of Michigan, the music collaboration, you yeah. know, the, the range in one region, you have clinicians for lo who 0% of their low-grade prostate cancer patients are managed with surveillance, and down the hall, it's 95%. Yeah. So, I mean, clearly there's still a lot of, of room for improvement in terms of complying with this approach. That's a really good point. And that was part, you know, we had Do Jim Monte, who was my past chairman, our yeah. past chairman, he, he wanted to push that because he started seeing this discrepancy. So that's, that's an interesting shout-out. <laughs>